this is very, very new, very, very new research, is what we're referring to as existential agency. And it relates to purpose, but I, I think it's different in an important way. So purpose, you could say, is I've been given a purpose, right? Like this is, you know, you can imagine purpose outside of your own decision making, right? You could say, I'm, you know, my purpose in this world is to do X. Some people would say, no, I create my own purpose, but that's not inherent in the concept of purpose because you can have goal driven behavior that you feel like you were, you were assigned. Like you could say my purpose, well, like you said a minute ago, my purpose is to reproduce, right? Um, existential agency is, you know, we define it as people's belief in their own ability to, to guide the meaning in their life, to have a meaningful life. So you could say my life is meaningful because I have this religious belief that, you know, that says all, you know, all life is meaningful and I've been given this purpose. But within that, you need some kind of drive, like you need to feel like you have the ability to take action and to do things, not just be passively pushed around and to say, well, I guess this is my meaning or I guess it's not my meaning. And so there seems to be this this more self-regulatory dimension of meaning. And that's what we call existential agency. But it is connected to purpose. Um, And people who, you know, like I said, this is very, very early work, um, but it seems like people who have a strong sense of existential agency even if you control for how you know how meaningful they see their lives, it's the people who have a really strong sense of agency that are the most motivated. They're the most driven. They're the most resilient, and they're the most entrepreneurial. You know, so they're the most willing to take risks. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that they see themselves as responsible for their own meaning. Right? They feel like when life feels meaningless, they can change it. They can do something about it. As opposed to people that, you know, maybe are just more like, well, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. And I'm not, you know, um, I can't do anything about this or my meaning is really contingent on these other external forces. And and so I think that that's and I think that's part of the reason I wanted to, to, to really start to figure that angle out was because I feel like we increasingly are living in a society, at least here in the in in the U.S. and I think this is the case more broadly in the Western world, where people are acting like you're not in control of anything, right? There's all this, you know, there's all these concerns about like systemic um, oppression and things like that. And you know, this isn't to take away from real structural challenges that people face. Um, but the point being is, if we're only talking about those things that are we think of as outside of people's controls or neglecting the fact that humans have all this cognitive horsepower up here, right? Regardless of what situation you were born into in life. And again, clearly there are privileges and advantages and differences between people. Um, But regardless of that, there's something going on within the, within humans that gives us a great deal of cognitive freedom if we choose to act on it. Right. Um, So I could get up tomorrow and say, you know, I've been kind of lazy every day and but this is going to be the day <laughs> that I, you know, I get my act together. And people do this all the time. You know, people set goals all the, the people change their for all the failure things we hear about, like barriers to things. People all the time absolutely take action based on goals that they set and priorities that they make. Um in order to take control over their lives. So I'm really interested in that agentic component of meaning. Well, think about why anyone ever gets seduced or finds it really sort of emotionally fulfilling to see those transformation photos of some guy, Ethan mm. Suplee, one of my buddies, the guy that was in Remember the Titans and Donnie Darko, a bunch of, a bunch of films. Mm. And um, he lost like 350 pounds. Like he lost yeah. a, a, two humans off of himself. And the reason <laughs> right. that people love that story is that you see someone that you thought was going down a particular path that had a meta narrative that they were attached to and they were on the rails, but through force of will and effort, they've managed to change the cart onto a different set of railway tracks. And they've done that through their own agency. So I think that mm-hmm. people intuitively are aware of this. It's, 
I think you're correct to say that the victimhood mentality that we're seeing at the moment um, completely outsources existential agency. And right. if man can make a heaven of hell and a hell of heaven, then your ability to interpret how the world is talking to you and how you are experiencing it is more than 50% of the battle. You, know, you have people that are in like terrible, terrible situations who are able to be relatively fulfilled, and people that seemingly have everything lottery winners that kill themselves. So, right. you know, your material situation is an influence, but it's not a determinant. You know, you would say maybe it it predisposes, but it doesn't predetermine. So, yeah, I think that framing things in that way and allowing people to understand and encouraging them toward look, take advantage, take control of the of the direction that your life's going in. I think that's a smart area of research. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. No, and you, you summed it up perfectly. I mean, and it doesn't even have to be because people tend to think of your example is a good one and a dramatic one, but even little, even little things. So, you know, people do, you know, like you'll see research on like even just increasing the amount you walk every day. So, you, you know, even people who aren't like, I'm going to make some gigantic transfer transformation but it's a choice just to say you know what i'm going to take the stairs instead of the the elevator or i guess you would say the lift right <laughs> like i'm gonna i lived in the uk for two years I, you remember I, it i think i remember the word still um but there's lots of little things that people do every day and even if even if there are, you know, because again, you know, and, and you made this point, and it's true. Like, even even if you start out with certain vulnerabilities, so let's say, let to use an example, think about like a genetic predisposition towards alcoholism, right? Some people just for whatever reason um, can't handle drinking. A lot of us can. A lot of us have no problems just saying, you know, like I drink, you know, sometimes a lot, sometimes hardly at all. And I can turn it on and off at, well, it's no big deal. Other people, they just, they can't crack the bottle. They really can't. But what, so, so, so one, so the victimhood narrative, as you described it, which you see a lot is, well, alcohol abuse isn't really a choice because it's a genetic disposition and it's a disease and it's, you know, uh, um, but, and, and so what's funny is the more we learn scientifically about that, the more people intuitively seem to think that, well, you have no control over it. But another way to look at it from an agency point of view is thanks to our scientific understanding of genetic um, vulnerabilities, you've just armed somebody with information so now they can say, you know what? I know I'm the type of person that can't be at the pub, that can't have alcohol in the house. And those are choices to set up your life based on information that you now have. And so, yeah, and it seems so obvious, but just that simple difference of looking at it from, oh, this is a genetic predisposition, I'm hopeless, to know learning, learning about genetics actually gives me information um, about my personality, about my vulnerabilities, things, you know, things that tempt me, things that bring out the worst in me, things that, things that motivate me. What is it that inspires me to be at my best? Like, so the more you can learn about these things scientifically, those aren't like determinants. <laughs> that doesn't mean like, you know, your life is just being, you're just being pushed around by these, by these external causes. They're information that can help you make choices to, to, you know, to live a better, a better life. So I actually think that as, as we learn more and more about, you know, you know, you know, the science of the brain, um, that doesn't mean we're less in control. That's giving us more information about how to, how to regulate our own behavior. But my feeling is that's kind of a minority position in the modern day scholar, you know, Western scholarship. Instead, people just seem to think, well, here's another excuse. Here's another reason why you're not, it's not your fault. Um, and I'm like, well, no, here's more information that, that arms you with the, with the ability um, to make better choices. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. It makes me very happy indeed. Peace.